we go. Thank you for that recording in progress. Okay, here we go. And so uh, teammates, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to kind of do the, um, the B side to the training that we've been hitting for the last couple of weeks. We've been talking about prospecting, right? And the importance of prospecting and the different prospecting pipelines and stuff like that. That was the A side. Now we got the B side to that. And so let, let, let me pull up something for you real quick. For those who don't know, what you see on your screen, we call this the winning momentum cycle. What you see on your screen, we call this the winning momentum cycle, right? And so, hold on, there's one more little piece to it. Hold on, there it is right there. This is six steps, six steps. We call it the winning momentum cycle. Say it with me, one, two, three. Winning momentum cycle, right? If you want to win in anything, you're going to need some momentum. When you have momentum, everything falls into place. And so what I showed you on the screen are six fundamentals, six systems slash fundamentals in the business that if you can master how to do each of those things, they all flow into each other. And it's just kind of like this thing that just continues to flow. If you master those fundamentals, you will create unstoppable momentum in your business. Y'all didn't hear me. I'm going to share it again. This is the winning momentum cycle. Let's take it one step at a time. Step one in the winning momentum cycle is prospecting. We just spent the last two, three weeks talking about prospecting. Step number two is scheduling appointments. Scheduling appointments, right? That's a big, big deal. Then step number three is the winning presentation. Earlier this year, we did a whole series of trainings on the winning presentation, even did a winning presentation competition because that's an important piece in the winning momentum cycle. And we wanted to teach you that. And then step four and five is the wealth builder getting referrals. Our first extensive training that we did as we kicked off 2021, we took a deep, deep dive into how to do a wealth builder, how to do a wealth builder effectively. How to take a person through it. What do you say? How do you use the wealth builder? We trained on that at the beginning of the year. And then we also uh, coupled that with getting referrals. How do you go about getting referrals and all that good stuff? And then we have step six that if you recruit someone, if you recruit someone, um, you have to know how to do a new recruit orientation and get them off to a fast start. That's extremely important. With all of these steps, steps one through six, we call this the winning momentum cycle. Mastering the cycle, that's what you need to be focused on. Nick, what do I need to be learning to win in Primerica? This. What are some tangible things that I need to be really focused on getting better at? This. This is it. You got to become a master at prospecting, a master at scheduling appointments. A master, I'm talking about ice water cold at doing a winning presentation. You got to become a master at doing a wealth builder and getting referrals. And then if you recruit somebody, how do you get your new recruit off to a fast start? You got to become a master thing because competence in these areas will equal confidence, which equals compensation. Come on, somebody. Competence. If you know what you're doing, if you know how to do it, you're going to be confident. It doesn't matter if you're speaking to someone that's single, if they're married, kids, no kids. You're, you're competent. You know how to handle the situation. You're meeting with somebody that's a teacher, somebody that's an accountant, an engineer. It doesn't matter. You know what you're doing. And if you know what you're doing, you're confident. And let me tell you what people buy. People don't buy Primerica. They buy you. And I know if I'm going to buy something from somebody, I want them to know what the heck they're talking about. Let me ask you something, family. Have you ever went to buy something from somebody and they didn't know what they were doing? You're like, man, give me somebody else. Like, they know, like, because I got questions and I'm about to make this purchase and this is important to me. I want to make sure that I'm working with somebody that knows what they're talking about. 
because when you get with that person and they're confident, see that confidence doesn't necessarily mean arrogance, right? Don't confuse the two. When you're confident, not arrogant, then you're humble. But at the same time, you're able to be direct and you're able to lead people because in your confidence, you know that if they do X, Y, Z that you're recommending, that the client is going to be okay. So we need you to be confident, I mean, competent and confident. And if you're both of those things and you have appointments and you're running activity, family, you're going to get compensated. You're going to get paid. And I know you came here to get paid. So I'm telling you right now, if your desire is to get paid in Primerica, I'm going to just let that sit a little bit. If your desire is to get paid in Primerica, then give me some of that $500,000 national. I want some of that. If your desire is to get then you got to get competent and confident in knowing how to do this winning momentum cycle. You got to get competent and confident on how to do this winning momentum cycle. Do I have your attention right now? Did, 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 did I stress the point enough? Okay, let's go in. Because I'm gonna tell you right now that until you master these two fundamentals, step one and step two, step one, prospecting, step two, scheduling appointments, they, these two fundamentals are so important to the process Family, they call them the great separator. The great separator. Prospecting and scheduling, they're so important in the business that if you don't master those two, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. Prospecting and scheduling appointments, right? And so if you want to get to the spoils, the riches, the overflow that this business has, you got to get rock solid ice water cold at those two fundamentals, prospecting and scheduling appointments. And guess what we talking about tonight, Pastor Chris? We talking about, da, 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 da. yes, sir. We are talking about scheduling appointments. We talking about scheduling appointments and we're going to talk about scheduling appointments um, for probably a couple of weeks, this week and maybe next week. We'll talk about it because it's that important, right? It's that important. Now, I don't know why it is, Coach Fowler, is that uh, everybody got, you know, they come into Primerica. You know, some people have their chest all out like, oh, yeah, man, I'm about to wreck it. Man, I'm about to, I'm about to go to the top. But then when you ask them to make a name list and make a phone call, this little thing right here becomes so heavy. It becomes so heavy. Right? Phone just be weighing a thousand pounds. Ah, ah, and it's just, it's just so hard for me to pick up the phone and call people that I talk to all the time. It's so hard for me to pick up the phone and, 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 and call somebody that I text and I see all the time to ask them, why is that? Why is that? You a whole grown woman, a whole grown man, and you so scared to pick up the phone and call the people who love you and care about you and will support you from here to kingdom come just to ask them for an appointment. And you know what? I get it. I get it. See, it, it, see the, the problem in the past, um, Coach B. Walker, used to be that people didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to say. So what do I say? I've never done this before, right? And people kind of had to figure it all out. That's not the problem. Not, not, not with us. Because we actually will give you the right words to say. So you don't have to try to figure out what to say, how to do this. We have the words already for you to say. All you have to do is use the words, right? And so... I want to introduce another element that might um, make it a challenge for people. Um, this is a gentleman right here, George Frazier. He is um, an amazing business mind, master networker, all that good stuff. Um, 
I was uh, listening to, um, this is when I, we used to listen to CDs all the time, but um, it was an um, audio CD that he had uh, made a recording and um, he was talking about, you know, people being successful in business. And he said something on one of his audios that it impacted me so deeply at the time and it still does to this day because I think that it, in, it, it, in, it encapsulates, you know, one of the biggest challenges and stumbling blocks that people have, but it seems like it's so simple, but it's the truth. He said, uh, it's basically the power of, I need help. And we were in the ALC, you know, regional vice president, um, you know, uh, $300,000 earner out of Philadelphia, um, frat brother, he, Terry, you know, he talked about how, you know, Philly is the city of brotherly love, but a lot of times people in Philly don't like asking people for help. For nothing, right? It's just like it's that it's that pride thing or whatever. And 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 Philly's not alone. I think that that's kind of an across the board thing that um, we'll help people, but a lot of times we have a challenge asking people for help. But uh, but George Frazier, he talked about the power of I need help. He said it is my deep belief. Listen to this. It is my deep belief that the key to success is directly related to your willingness to ask people for help. I'm going to repeat that. It is my deep belief that the key to success is directly related to whose willingness? Is it my willingness? Is it their will? No. To your willingness to ask people for help. And I heard that Mom, and I was like, that's right. In Primerica, that's right. If you want to win in Primerica, if you want to get off to a fast start, if you want to be able to get promoted and reach certain milestones and create the momentum in the winning momentum cycle, it all starts. It all starts with your willingness to ask people for help. You have to ask people for help, right? And so if you can get to that, to when you say, hey, I'm, I don't have a problem asking people for help, right? And I'm telling you something, the help that you're asking for in Primerica is help that can be easily given. We're not asking people for money, like crazy amounts of money. We're not asking people to, um, <laughs> to mortgage their house. We're not asking people to run in a burning building. We're not asking people um, to test out bulletproof vests and things like that. I mean, I mean, it's very simple, the help that you're asking for. You're literally asking people for 20 to 30 minutes of their time to jump on a Zoom meeting. That's it. You are asking the people that you know and people who know you for 20 to 30 minutes of their time to jump on a Zoom meeting. And if you're outside of your warm market, we talked about the different markets out there, the different prospecting pipelines. If you're calling a referral, somebody that you don't know, but they were referred to you, or if you're talking to somebody that you just met, right? You're prospecting them, you just met them. All you're asking for is 20 to 30 minutes of their time. That's it. And you know what? They can either say yes, or they can say, y'all already got it. No. But at the end of the day, whether they say yes or no, it matters, but it doesn't matter. Your job is to ask. Are y'all with me? Your job is to ask enough people to find enough people that say yes. And we're going to talk about that later on. Your job is to ask enough people to get enough yeses, right? And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. All right, so let's talk about, we're talking about appointments, right? So Nick, what type of appointments are you talking about? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Family, there's only five types of appointments that you're going to have to schedule. Now, if there's more, then hey, man, I had to put them down. But these are the five main types of appointments that you're going to have to schedule in Primerica. I'm talking about, Income producing appointments, right? 
There's five types of appointments. Notice I didn't say 15. Notice I didn't say 50. There's only five types of appointments that you have to set in Primerica. And guess what? The verbiage that you have to say to schedule, they're kind of all similar, right? Y'all don't believe me. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about them. Five types of appointments, five types, right? The first appointment, this is for our new recruits. It's a character reference appointment. Character reference appointment. And you know what's so cool about the setting the character reference appointment, Andrea? You know what's so cool about that? Who schedules the character reference appointment? Is it the new recruit or is it the field trainer? Who schedules that? The field trainer. So you don't even have to schedule this appointment. All you got to do is send out a text message. That's it. And your field trainer schedules that appointment for you. Now, this is what I want uh, to make you aware of. If you're talking about winning in Primerica, at some point, that means that you're talking about becoming a field trainer. So if you plan on becoming a field trainer because you want to win in Primerica, doesn't that mean that you at least need to know how to, to schedule a character reference appointment? Like you should learn that? Yeah, let's look at it. Let's look at it together, right? Because it's not that hard. It's not something that's crazy ridiculous or out of, you know, out of, out of the realm of possibility and, you know, what are they saying and all that stuff. No, it's not any of that. It's not any of that, right? And so we're going to look at it together. Like, what is this whole character reference appointment? You know, what is this boogeyman that we got to face uh, when it comes to scheduling appointments? Okay, I'm going to show you the boogeyman. Here we go. All right. This is it right here. That's all it is. This is it, right? So when a new recruit sends out a text message letting them know, hey, look, I, 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 um, I, I need your help. Um, I'm in a management training program to open up my own uh, financial services agency. They asked me to identify some people who can be a character reference for me. Um, I put your name down as a person that they can call. Um, you know, is it okay if I, you know, if I put your name down as a person for them to call? Uh, let me know if that's okay. You know, the whole verb is that you send in the text message. Uh, Y'all get the picture. And that person's going to say, yeah, you know, they can call me. And so what your field trainer is going to do is going to call them up and they're going to say this. Hey, may I speak to Cheryl? Yeah, this is Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl, this is Benicia. Um, I got your number from Karen. Did she give you a heads up that I was going to call? I'm right here. She's going to say, yeah, that WFA means wait for answer. Wait for answer from the person that you're talking to. Um, hey, well, Cheryl, I I'm a regional vice president um, in the office that Karen's going to be working out of. I'm sure she told you that we had to identify some people who give you character references. Uh, she put your name down as a person we can contact. You got a quick second. Yeah. All right, great. Well, Cheryl, how long have you known Karen? And guess what? Cheryl's going to start saying how long she's known Karen. And then you're going to say, well, in the years that you've known her, how would you describe her personality? And then Cheryl's going to say some great things about Karen. Why? Because she's supposed to. This might be her best friend. This might be um, a church member. This might be a family member. Are y'all with me? And so it's very easy. Then you say, well, let me ask you this. You pretty much kind of answered the question, but would you also consider um, Karen a trustworthy person? Oh, absolutely. This that, that, she's very trustworthy. She's watched my kids before. Okay, great. Well, do you think that she's the type of person that works well with others? Do you think that she can function well in a team environment? These are all of the things on the character reference. And she'll say, yep, I think that they are. I mean, I've seen uh, them do it in the past. And I'll be like, great. Well, this has really just been confirmation of what we've determined um, about Cheryl anyway. She's just been a joy to work with. Um, is there anything else that you might want to add? Look at this. Is there anything else you might want to add that can help her solidify things? Well, I just think that you would get a great person by her joining your team, this, that, and the other. Man, they're going to say some amazing things about the person we're calling about. And you know how we know that? Because when we did character reference calls for you, all of your people said great things about you, right? And then this is where the magic happens. You say, well, great. Last question, Cheryl. 
Does Karen have enough credibility with you that you would allow her to meet with you to view a brief Zoom video conference presentation as part of her training? And nine times out of 10, they're going to say, yes. And you say, well, great. And this is where I ad lib. I add this little piece in there. This isn't on the page, but this just works for me. And I'm going to share this with you guys. So when they say, yes, I'll do it. I say, well, great. Well, I don't know if um, Karen has shared this much with you, but she's in our management training program to open up her own financial services agency. Isn't that awesome? And they say, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, great. Well, she's not quitting her job. It's just kind of something that she's pursuing uh, part-time. And she's identified two days out of the week that she's available to do her training. And I'm here to tell you, family, the two days that I say are the two days that the person identified that they can do Primerica. And I say, hey, she's got a Wednesday or a Saturday available. Which one of those days will work good for you to maybe do a 20 to 30 minute Zoom video conference meeting just so we can show you how she's going to be impacting families in the community? And they choose the day. Then I say, well, great. Well, what time works for you? Can you do this time or that time? I'm giving them the alternate of choice, scheduling the appointment for the new recruit. And so we lock down the time. I say, great. What I'm going to do, I'm the trainer that's going to be on the deal. I'm going to send you the Zoom video conference information. I'll include Karen on that information as well. I'll include her on that text. And we look forward to meeting you. Um, if anything changes, let us know. But I think you'll be impressed with the information and what Karen is involved with. I look forward to talking to you then. And that's it. And your job when you're doing the character reference call as the trainer is to build up as much good rapport with the person. Why? Because you're going to be the one that's meeting them. So if you build up a lot of goodwill and a good rapport with that person in advance of the meeting, it's only going to help you. Does that make sense? Shake your head. Yes, if that makes sense. All right. And so that's the character reference appointment. Coach B. Walk, is there anything hard about that? Is there anything challenging about that? Not at all. You know, Coach Fowler, easy breezy lemon squeezy. That's what it is. Yeah. It's nothing hard about that. It's nothing challenging. And so I'm challenging teammates. Look, the words are right there on the page. You don't have to reinvent anything. It's right there. All it is is just looking at it and reading it. And so if you want to be a trainer one day, then it'll, it, it'll behoove you to just learn that, all right? And so that's one appointment, but we got more, right? That's character reference. Then you got the warm market field training appointment. Well, Nick, what's that? This is a script that we use, the type of appointment that you schedule when um, the warm market field training appointment is when the new recruit actually picks up the phone and calls people in their market. So instead of the trainer doing the character reference call and scheduling the appointment for them, the new recruit actually uses a script to call people in their market. Now, let me say this. When you're getting started with a new person, we strongly, strongly recommend in our system that you do the character reference appointments first. Once a new recruit has kind of been on some appointments, they're kind of getting the hang of it, then you graduate them. Listen to me, this is for the new recruits. You have to be graduated. <laughs> if I'm using that the correct way, you have to be graduated. You have to graduate to the field training, to the real market field training script. Because you've seen some things, you've been to some trainings, you kind of have a understanding and a better uh, um, just kind of handle on what's going on. You're just not green and brand new, right? And so what happens when a person um, uses the, uh, the warm market script? This is it right here. Hopefully you all can see this, right? This is the warm market script. This is where the new recruit picks up the phone and they make the phone call to somebody in, in, their, in their market to schedule an appointment, right? Now, like it says up here, what does it say up here? Can y'all see that? I'm highlighting. What does that say? That says role play this script 
three to five times before making the first phone call. See, that's me. Y'all missed that. Role play this script three to five times before making the phone call. Why do y'all think it's important to role play the script? Somebody, somebody type it in the chat for me. Why y'all think it's important to role play this script before you make your phone call with it? Why do y'all think that is? I'm waiting. I'm going to wait. Andrea, so it sounds, see, I know, see, I knew when it, 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 RVPs know. I mean, so it sounds natural. So you can get comfortable, absolutely. To be familiar with the verbiage, absolutely. You guys are spot on, right? You don't want to look at a script and you be calling, you said, you calling your friend and it's sounding like you reading the script. Like Kaza said, you don't want to stutter, right? You know, you know, some, man, some of us was afraid, afraid to read out loud in class. So that's essentially what you got to do. You got to read out loud, you know? And so you just want to get comfortable with it, you know? So, and who are you role-playing the, um, the script with? With your trainer. You role-play that script with your trainer, right? Y'all are on the phone. Ring, ring, hello? And your trainer is the person you're calling and you're, and you're going through the script. And then they're going to give you some coaching and some feedback on that, right? And then once you sound to a place, now sometimes some of you guys are just naturals. You don't need to role play it three to five times. Uh, Coach Fowler, I, I, I role played it with people to where they nailed it the first time, right? They nailed it. I said, man, you don't even need to role play it, but we're ready. Like you can make a phone call because you sound that good. And some of you guys are that good, right? You're that good. But let me show you the power of this script. Let me show you the power of it, right? So what you do, this is a new recruit, right? Calling someone in their warm market to schedule an appointment. And they call them up. They say, hey, you know, they small talk. Hey, man, I speak to Jason. Hey, Jason, what's going on, man, bro? How you doing? They ask you, man, you know, uh, you know, how's work today? Yeah, excellent, man. Okay, good. Listen, bro, the reason why I'm calling is because I need your help. You all see that? The reason why I'm calling is because I need your help. See, your success in this business is predicated on your willingness to ask for help. See, it's built into the script. And when you call people in your mind, and I really need y'all to feel me on this. When you call people that you know, and they know you, and you say, hey, I need your help. I'm here to tell you there's something inside of them oftentimes that wants to help you. They want to come to your rescue, right? It'd be no different if somebody called you up and said, man, listen, I need your help with something, bro. Just human nature, just you being a good person, you're going to want you to say, hey, what do you need? What's going on? What's happening? Because I'm telling you, the people that you all know, that's the type of relationship that you have with them. And so you tell them that, I need your help. I started a second career, or I started a new career that I'm excited about, and I need to get some training done with people I know. So I was wondering if you would mind helping me with my training by letting me schedule a Zoom video conference meeting with you. That's it. That's the speech. That's the intro to the, uh, to the script. Hey, reason I'm calling because I need your help. I started a second career, man. I'm excited about it. But I need to get some training done with some people I know. So I was just wondering if you would mind helping me with my training by letting me schedule just a brief Zoom video conference meeting with you. And you know what they're going to say? They may say, sure, and not ask any questions. And you know why they say, sure? Because of you. You have that much credibility with the people. But for some of us, it ain't going to be that easy. They're not just going to say, sure. They're going to ask this next question that says, what is it? What are you doing? Second career, what you got going on? What's happening? You leading into What's going on? What are you leading to? Right? And you know what? When they ask that question, you better get excited. When they ask that question, you better get excited. 
When they ask you, what are you doing? What is it? You better get excited. And you know why? Because you know exactly what to say next. You know exactly what to say next. Oh, man, Coach B was preparing me. She told me that they were going to say, what is it? And now that they just said, what is it? I know exactly what to say. And family, this is what you say next. You say, I'm in a management. See, look here. I'm in a management training program with a company to open up my own financial services agency. Right now, I'm just trying to get my name out there to share how I'll be helping families in the community. But I only want to meet with people I know and whose opinions I respect, like you and Denise. So would you guys mind helping me out with my training? Let me say this, man. Did you mention anything about I want to sell you some life insurance? Did you mention anything about that? No. Did you mention anything about, hey, I want to come over and get all in your 401k business and see how much money you got saved or how much money you don't have saved for retirement? Did you say that? No. Did you say anything about I want to recruit you to my team so I can make some money off of you? You ain't say nothing like that. All you did was say, hey, I'm in a management training program, right? To open up my own financial services agency and need to get this training out of the way. I only want to sit down with people I know and whose opinions I respect like yours. You just paid them a compliment. Come on, somebody, to show you what I'm going to be doing to impact families in the community, right? It's not your job, just like, oh, my God, it's not your job to sell the product right now. It's not your job to do that. It's not your job to be getting into a conversation of why term is better than whole life or why they need to get life insurance out. That's not your job. If you're doing that and you're having conversations, you're overstepping, you're overreaching. It may work for some people, but it's not going to work for everybody. I'm listening to me. It, it may work for some people. It's not going to work for everybody. And you're going to find yourself by yourself with no appointments because you were trying to do too much when you were scheduling the appointment. Now, listen, if you've said things like that and you were able to get the appointment, God bless you. I'm not tripping. But what I want to tell you, teammates, is I want to share this skill with you so you'll know what to do most of the time so you can get the appointments with everybody. See, if you lean on your relationship, need your help, man. Need your help. I'm starting a new career. I'm starting a second career. I need to get some training. I want to show you what I'm doing to impact families in the community. I respect your opinion. You and your wife, I respect you guys' opinion. Can y'all help me out? Guys, if you stay in there, like, I know that you, I know that you just excited. You want to share everything with them. Man, I'm in America. Man, you know, I'm going to be financially independent, man. They got this thing called a fan number, a F-A-N number. And all that you call it all different things. And are you excited? But a lot of times that don't translate over the phone. But if you keep it simple. And you play to the strength, and the strength is your relationship. I need your help. You will schedule your appointment. You'll schedule your appointment, right? And so there's other appointments for you to be able to schedule. Um, I just wanted to kind of hit some of those uh, real quick, just closing those out. You do that. They're going to say, sure. Great. What day can my trainer and I do a brief 20 to 30-minute video conference meeting with you? Can we do Wednesday or Saturday? You always give people two choices. We call that the alternate of choice close. When you give people two choices, it forces them to choose one. See, when you call somebody up and you say, hey, which day works for you? When can we meet? And you just leave it open-ended, you might get pushed out two weeks. But if you say, hey, great, what day could my trainer and I meet with you via Zoom for 20 to 30 minutes? Can you do Wednesday or Saturday? What they're doing in their mind is, what do I got going on this Wednesday? What do I got going on on Saturday? Oh, Saturday's free. We can do Saturday. Okay, great. What time do you want to meet? Give them another alternate choice on times. Do you want to do 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock? 
or 12 o'clock or one o'clock, right? And they'll choose that time because you gave them the alternative choice. And if they're married, you let them know, hey, I need you and your spouse there because we don't do any one-legged appointments. Don't do any one-legged appointments, y'all. If their husband ain't deployed overseas in the military or, or, or traveling and all like that, a truck driver that stay gone, this, that, don't do no one-legged appointments. Because I'm telling you right now, it's going to come back to bite you. When you're trying to really close this, it'll come back to bite you. But that skill of giving the alternate choice, let me tell you something real quick. I just used this script with a teammate today. Today, right? Melissa Esparza, um, she wasn't able to be online. She had another obligation this evening. She was like, Nick, record the training. So Melissa, I'm shouting you out on the training. You'll hear this when you listen to it. I said, Melissa, I'm going to send you, I think they're ready for the warm market field training script. I've sent it to her yesterday. I said, look it over. I'm going to call you at five o'clock. We're going to role play the script, and then we're going to make phone calls to these people from your list. Called her at five. I said, let's role play it. Have you looked it over? She said, yes, I have. We role play it. The first time she went through it, she sounded amazing. I said, I think you're ready. And so we called the first person, and I'm telling you guys, just like this script is laid out, it went just like clockwork. Boom, boom. But what was interesting, Coach B-Walk, is that she had so much credibility with the people. When she said the first paragraph, hey, I'm starting a new career. Um, you know, I need to get some training out of the way. Would you mind helping me with my training? Let me schedule a Zoom video company. They said, sure. No questions asked. It threw them off. She was like, oh, um, well, let me at least kind of tell you what I'm doing. And then she went through and said, she didn't have to go through the same path, but she went through it. And they were like, yeah, that's fine, let's do it. And she went four for four. She called four people and scheduled four appointments. Every last one of them scheduled the appointment. Y'all think I'm playing. This happened right before we got on training. Right before we got on training. Every person she called, she used this script that I just got off of, and she scheduled four appointments. And she's excited. And I'm telling you right now, it works. It works. Just like all of our other scripts work, guys. They work. And so let's talk about it. And so we have scripts for warm market character reference, warm market field training, warm market center of influence. It's a little bit different than the warm market field training, um, but, but it's a very, very effective script for people that you may have been in the business for a second and you might have a chicken list, a chicken list of people that you haven't called yet that you think <laughs> got a little influence or whatever the case may be. It might be a pastor or first lady to where you're not necessarily trying to recruit them. You're just trying to get referrals from them. That's a good one. World Market Center of Influence. We have referral scripts for when you're calling referrals that have been sent to you as potential clients. Or referrals that have been sent to you as potential recruits, new recruits. We have scripts for that. We have the linking emergency contact and beneficiary contact scripts as well to when you close a life insurance policy and you're getting emergency contacts from people and you're scheduling appointments with them. we got scripts for that. All of that stuff is out there, guys. All of that stuff is out there, right? And we're going to be covering these things um, in the next week or so. All right. Then we have seven main objections that you will confront in the business. There's seven main objections. I know the verbiage to some of them, some of them might be different, but they're pretty much, they all fall into these little categories. Seven main objections, right? That you're going to confront in the business. When you make a phone call to somebody, these may be the objections that they give you, that they put in front of you that might prevent them from scheduling the appointment with you. Now, let me say this. I'm going to give you this information. When you're calling people in your warm market, you should not be getting a lot of these objections. Am I right, Coach Fowler? When you're calling people in your warm market, your natural market, you should not be getting a lot of these seven objections. If you are getting some of these seven objections or a lot of these seven objections, then we need to really connect with you as your field trainer to see what your level of credibility is with this list of people. 
But your warm market should be people that you know, people who know you have a level of credibility with them, that you shouldn't be getting a, getting a lot of these objections. A lot of these objections show up when you're calling referrals or um, if you're calling people that you maybe got their name off of a list. Maybe you went to a networking event and people just signed up on a sheet and you're trying to contact them back. You may get some of these objections when you're doing that where there's not a real connection, personal connection there. So the first objection is I'm not interested. I'm not interested, right? That's an objection. You call somebody, they say, ah, you know, I don't know if I'm interested right now. Um, or they say, I'm too busy. You know, I just got a lot going on. I mean, it sounds good, Benicia, but I just got a lot going on right now. I don't know if I'll have time to really be able to meet with you um, and things like that. Have y'all, have y'all had somebody tell y'all that? Raise your hand if you've had somebody tell you that, that they just ain't got the time, right? Okay. Well, we have a, we have something that you can say an overcoming objections uh, response that you can share with them that might be able to get you over the hump with that person. All right. And so uh, what else we got? Uh, can I call Can you call me back at another time? You know, right now it's just bad. You know, I got this going on. I'll be free in the spring. Man, I actually had somebody tell me in the fall that they're going to be free in the spring. <laughs> to cut. I'm, like, I'm like, you mean to tell me you want me to call you five months from now? Am I the only one that's had that happen before? Like, people try to push you off until two birthdays from now or something like that? Hey, man, I'm 30. Hit me when I'm 33. You know, like, I mean, just something weird like that. Like, call me at a later time. Got objections for that. Oh, uh, this is the new one right here. Can you email me some information? Can you email me some stuff to look over? <laughs> we got an objection uh, overcomer for that. Um, I already have a financial plan. Okay, that's good. All right. That might be an objection that you come across. Uh, let me check with my spouse. Ah, the old old hide behind my, 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 my spouse trick. I said, I got you. Right, that's the old hide behind my wife trick. Hide behind my husband trick. Yeah, I got you. We got an objection for that. I'll overcome an objection uh, response for that. We got we got some for that. And then um, I don't want to buy anything, man. I, I don't. I mean, I'm not interested in buying nothing right now, man. I mean, you trying to sell me something? I'm not interested in buying nothing right now, guys. All of these objections come up when you are scheduling appointments with people, right? These things can come out. It can be some form of these seven things that'll come out. We have um, a way for you to overcome some of those. Now, I'm here to tell you, it's not foolproof. It's not that, right? It's not, it, it doesn't work 100% of the time, but it does work. And so just knowing how to respond when these things come up, that's half the battle. That's half the battle. We just want to equip you with what to say if they do come up, right? And so scheduling appointments is a very, very key fundamental. We want to really bake this into you guys, right? And, and, and really get it indoctrinated in your thinking and, you know, have you really conf, um, competent and confident at these skills, right? And so um, just as a reminder, we have these resources available to you um, on our virtual base shop. So if you go into um, your base shops, uh, when you log on to Prime America Online, you click on virtual base shop right here, it'll take you into um, your, your, your RVP's virtual base shop. So for, for those who are in the Proven Movement base shop, you'll go into ours. For those who are in Blessed Dynasty, you, Dynasty you'll go into Blessed Dynasty's uh, virtual base shop, which is kind of like your team uh, filing cabinet page. Same thing with Secret Weapon, right? And so um, underneath this thing, uh, this, this comes up the virtual base shop. There's a resource tab up at the top and you click on that. It says base shop resources. Click there, base shop resources right? And then the available resources should come up. Now, in our, our virtual base shop, we have a lot of different things in there. But this particular section, we have labeled scripts. <laughs> and all of our scripts are there. You can click on them and download them as a PDF. And you got them. You got the scripts right there. Those are the words. Those are the things to say 
whenever you want to schedule any type of appointment, the overcoming objections and what to say, that, 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 that list of the seven objections and how to respond to those, that's in there. That's in there, right? So we have the tools readily available to you. We have them readily available to you. In Virtual Base Shop, click on the Virtual Base Shop um, um, link on, the, on POL, right? And then when you go to Virtual Base Shop, you're going to click on uh, Base Shop Resources and all that and click on there and then you can get to it, right? That's it. And so um, I want to say this, next week, coming next week, we're going to do some practice drill rehearse. We'll do some practice drill rehearse because it's one thing to hear me talking about it, but it's another thing for you to actually practice these things, to get better at these things, right? And just like we practice the winning presentation, we want you to get some experience practicing how to use these scripts to schedule appointments so you sound like you. You sound natural, but you sound competent and you sound confident doing it, right? So we're going to do some breakout rooms, practice your rehearse, and maybe you guys can do some role play scenarios and all that type. So we'll set up uh, different breakout rooms and we'll assign people to those different breakout rooms. And, um, and man, we'll get after it. Practice makes perfect. Absolutely, Sakrita. Practice makes perfect. And so we're going to have a good time with it, man. It's going to be fun. It's going to be good. But I need you to take it seriously. Lock in because, you know, the work you put in and those practice you rehearse, that's going to make you better. Now, th th this is my suggestion. Don't wait until next Tuesday. Should they wait until next Tuesday? Because be wrong. No, don't wait until next Tuesday. You got access to this other stuff right now. Start looking it over. You can start practicing with your trainer. You can start practicing with your spouse. Get better at that stuff starting tonight. Starting tonight, right? And again, we can end this summer of separation season to where you can truly say, Pastor Chris, that I went from lukewarm skills to ice water cold skills. Like, I got that. Like, I like, man, I, I'm still maybe kind of a little, I, I need some help with the road building, but that scheduling appointment thing, I got that. Like, I got that. Right? I'm not out here just finessing scheduling appointments. You know, I'm just scheduling all my appointments based on my personality, my good looks, and, and people just like me. I'm not doing it. No, I'm scheduling appointments in a systematic, effective way right? And that's what you want to learn because systems duplicate, personalities don't. Systems duplicate, personalities don't. And so if you want to grow a business, you're going to have to duplicate what you're doing. Somebody has to be able to do what you're doing. And so you need to be able to learn something that you can teach somebody so you can continue to duplicate it, all right? And so Real quick, I want to transition into a piece talking about scheduling appointments to where, family, let me talk to you all from the heart real quick. Because um, as we close out this summer of separation season, man, there is a blessing wave coming. There is something huge brewing. There is something, there is a stirring in the spiritual realm. And I just think that we are positioning ourselves for a massive overflow. And I'm speaking that and I need y'all to receive what I'm saying. But I'm here to tell you right now that those who are in the position, the receiving position are the ones that's gonna reap the most. And so I just wanna call to greatness right now. Not, not I, I, I wish it was everybody, but I know that this message might not land on everybody. Listen to me. I'm looking for a few good men and women, a few good men and women that can commit to something that if you commit to this, I'm talking about six, nine, 10 months from now, your life will be totally different. Regional vice president, right? $100,000 income or on your way to $100,000 income, on your way to knocking out freedom for your family, right? Having your own business, you your own CEO. If you commit to what I'm about to show you right now, you're well on your way to doing that. And I'm not talking about 
This is something that you do one time. I'm talking about that you're consistently doing this. And it is a commitment. And it is maybe a stretch a little bit. And that's why I said, man, I'm just, I'm just calling the greatness. You know, we need a few good men and women that can see this vision and to lock into it. And I want to share it with you, family. What I'm talking about is we need a few good men and women that can lock arms with Rahima and I and Coach B. Walk and Andrea Cassie Fowler. That few good men and women can commit to a monthly production, personal production goal of three recruits by 5,000 in premium. Three recruits, 5,000 in personal life insurance premium. Three personal recruits, 5,000 in personal life insurance premium. Between now and the convention next June, between now and the convention next June, if you can lock in and do that, the three by 5,000, three personal recruits, 5,000, if you can lock in and do that, I'm here to tell you right now, the primarical world will open up to you. Three personal recruits, 5,000 premium. I'll be talking more about that, but I'm here to tell you, family, all of the spoils in Primerica, the contracts, the promotion, the script, I mean, uh, the trips, the stock, three recruits, 5,000. It's a game changer for you. It's going to be a game changer. I had an emergency meeting last night with Aunt Jackie's team, and we talked about this, right? I got some other meetings this week with some team, and we're going to talk more about this. But I'm here to tell you, family, we're going from where we are right now. God has brought us very far. He has blessed us well in this business. But there's a stirring in the spirit realm right now that, man, this is only the beginning. We ain't even scratched the surface yet. We ain't even scratched the surface yet on where we're headed. And family, we want so many people to go with us, right? I know there's some new people on the call, man, that you just coming into this thing and you're saying, is this real? You know, can I, can, can I trust what they're saying? You know, I'm here to tell you that, oh, taste and see. Test us and see. And I guarantee you that if you can allow yourself to be available, if you're a credible person and you can be coachable and you work with us and you allow us to work with you, we like, I'm telling you, man, big things is going to happen for you. Big things is going to happen for you. Three recruits. Three recruits, 5,000 in premium. Three recruits, 5,000. And I promise you, family, the spoils of this company and this business will open up to you, right? And so with that being said, family, those three recruits, 5,000 premium, what does it break down to, man? Eight scheduled appointments a week. And that can be a combination of first-time appointments and second-time wealth build appointments. Eight appointments scheduled a week. We're talking about scheduling appointments. See, inside of that eight appointments is the production that we talked about. Inside of those eight appointments is the production that we're talking about. Eight personal appointments a week. I mean, if you can lock in, and I'm telling you, looking for a few good men and women, a few good women and men, a few good women and men, we're looking for them. Sky's the limit. All right, with that being said, family, check this out. Woo! A couple of quick announcements. We're going to uh, share this thing up, and, um, and we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I thank you guys so much. Hopefully, this training was impactful. Hopefully, you grew and you learned some things. I'm telling you, in the coming weeks, you want to continue to show up and plug back in because next week, we're going to be role playing. We're going to be getting really, really tight, really, really skilled at scheduling these appointments. I love you guys.